the Supersport 600 class in still very, very damp conditions, but after two rounds, this is the third, of course, Mark Farmer sits out in front, Morrison in second place, Borley from Southend on Sea, Ian Simpson, who's had a win, is on 20, so that's the only points he collected, Roger Milne and Jim Moody. Simpson is on the second row, but pole position here today was taken by young Sean Emmett, 20 years of age from Camberley in Surrey. He's only got five points so far in only his third season of racing. So no mean achievement for the young man there. It's a question of whether or not he can sustain that form in these conditions. I suspect that when he qualified yesterday, it wasn't anything like as wet as it is now. And the times, in fact, indicate 144.2. That's a pretty quick time, so it was dry when he set that qualifying time. But a great start by Southend's Phil Borley, number six in the middle, sweeping round the outside, however. It's pretty congested at Paddock Hill Bend, but all the 600s are round safely. Up towards Druids, 40 of them went. Just look at that, what a gaggle. Jim Moody again. It looks as though it's Jim Moody and a great twitch from the bike as they go down Graham Hill towards Graham Hill Bend. Looking to pick up the number of that leader. Not that easy at this distance. Visibility, not the best. It isn't Jim Moody. Roger Burnett is alongside me, fresh from a very, very successful second place in the 750cc race. I hope he's sufficiently elated and has come down enough to be able to give some worthwhile comments on this. The conditions out there, Roger, what are they like? Actually, the conditions now are slightly better than they were during the race a while ago. Um, it's stopped raining and the track, I think, will see perhaps a dry, a dry line forming um, as this race progresses. And Ian Simpson and uh, Brian Morrison and Moody were in the first four there. I couldn't pick out the leader as it went through Barry, but perhaps you've got it now. Well, Jim Moody is there in fourth place, but the leader was number 26, Dave Martin from Southall. Indeed, it is Dave Martin from Southall. Now, there's a surprise because we hadn't reckoned to see him. He certainly wasn't anything like. He's come from the sixth row to take the lead. That's astonishing. Yeah, um, you would have to say either he'd got very good grip off the start line uh, while the others were wheel spinning away and managed to pull through, or perhaps a little bit of cheating was uh, involved there, but I wouldn't like to imply anything. Beg your pardon, Martin. Martin on the sixth row was number 40. That's the other Martin. He was in the middle, so it was a great start for him. Number five, then, Brian Morrison now leads with Jim Moody. So the two Scots side by side into Paddock Hill Bend, feeling their way round. That's the best thing they can do. Very tentatively down. Moody now is getting out in front. So Martin being pushed a little bit further back now as Jim Moody, number four, shoves the Howard Cross Motorcycles Yamaha, the FZR 600 out in front. Morrison, a great twitch from Ives there. Steve Ives is well placed as well. So Steve Ives in third place, making a bid for second. Well, all at sixes and sevens here, Roger, tentatively feeling their way around. They're on road tyres, obviously still very tricky, even for them. Yeah, I would imagine that it's probably a little, lot more tricky for them. They are on road tyres, but they haven't got the, uh, the uh, uh, facility to actually use a softer compound, which we have, obviously, on the 750s. So they're probably on quite hard tyres, and they will take quite a lot of warming up, and that's why they're perhaps going round very tentatively, as they are. But... To ride in these conditions, you really require um, a smooth riding style. Don't do anything jerky. The bike says struggling for grip as it is, and uh, if you just move about on the machine or open the throttle aggressively or brake aggressively, then you are going to upset the stability of it and perhaps cause it to break traction. Well, my apologies go to the middle man on the front row, number 26, Martin. I was, in fact, confusing him with number 40. Wade Martin from Buckskin, so a little bit confusing in these conditions. Also very difficult to identify the numbers, from, certainly from where we're standing, but now they're stretching out. It's Moody, and right with him, it's Steve Ives riding number two. So Steve Ives, runner-up in last year's 600 Supersport Championship, hence the number on his bike on that very, very quick Stockport Motorcycle Centre 
Yamaha is now putting the pressure on Jim Moody. Brian Morrison is down in third. In fourth, it is Ian Simpson from Dalbiti. So Simpson riding number 22 is in fourth place. In fifth place, it's young David Jeffries, the son of Tony Jeffries. Of course, the famous Jeffries family from Shipley. Nick rode in the TT, despite, I gather, some injuries. Yeah, his uh, uncle Nick um, was actually riding in the TT with a broken ankle that he sustained at Cadwell Park during a, a test session about three weeks before the Isle of Man. Just uh, the, the, the latter of those riders there, down in, uh, I think, seventh place, is Carl Fogarty. Um, interestingly, Carl hasn't ridden a 600, um, or didn't intend to ride a 600 this year. He rode one in the last round at Donington Park and was quite confident that he may be able to win this race. So maybe he's made it, making a, a late charge through to the front or just feeling his way at this stage, but uh, he did feel very confident about this. Well, Fogarty qualified sixth fastest. He was on the second row, and there he is in your picture now. Number 25, Carl Fogarty from Blackburn, the man who put his toe in the water in the world of Grand Prix, and uh, I think was a little bit overawed, shall I say, by the power and the professionalism of the GP teams. And after two outings on the Honda, which was uh, previously ridden by Pier Francisco Keeley, he withdrew, and I think it's safe to say that's the last we'll see of Fogarty on the Grand Prix scene. Yeah, Carl just pulled his hand across his visor there. What he was doing was trying to wipe the water off it. He's obviously struggling with visibility, looking back there, only to see uh, Mr. Martin very close in attendance. But um, it's another problem, obviously, not only the track surface being slippery, but the actual visibility. You tend to, yeah, you, you get hot and tend to blow mist onto the inside of the visor that uh, protects the wind from your eyes. You can see Jim Moody's got a lot of white tape across there, which is actually stopping his breath going up onto the screen, and forcing it out the bottom of the helmet. So that's another hazard and, and one that many rider go many a rider goes out of a race with. Second place then, number two, Steve Ives from Hyde in Cheshire. Ahead of him, number four, Jim Moody from Glasgow. And Moody is getting quicker. Number 31, the faller there. That's David Jeffries. So young David Jeffries, fifth fastest, was on the front row, and he's dumped it against the barrier. So the Honda is parked against the crash rail. David Jeffries' 600 race is over. And that's a great pity for him. Perfectly OK, up and well, and we'll look forward to seeing David Jeffries at the next round at Cadwell Park. So there's the young man, not too pleased with the proceedings. He was looking forward to a good result from the front row. Neck and neck, then, these two. Jim Moody, number four, storming round. There's the time for yourself. So. 159.64, nothing like the qualifying times of 144.21. That just indicates how dry the conditions were then by comparison. Moody's bike still twitching. We've seen him ride hard. He goes well, this Scott, doesn't he? And the machine does seem to be well set up. He was going well in the 400 race and he's going well in the 600s here, but he's having to fight off the attentions of Steve Ives. These two now stretching away, and it looks to me as though Ives might just have something left in reserve, but look at Ian Simpson closing now. Simpson already one win in this class this year. Simpson sitting in fourth place in the championship, one at Donington, can he repeat it? Mark Farmer, the Osterman, won the first round at Snetterton, so it's an open book, really, it's anybody's race. Um, Moody's bike doesn't look to be quite handling quite as good as Steve Ives to me, um, Barry, they're on lap five now, and as Moody exits uh, Druids, this is the corner that they're approaching now, Druids Herpin, as it's known, as Simpson takes that second place from Ives, can't quite see the rear end of Moody's bike, but it always tends to snake around coming out of there. And Ives just looked like he was better positioned, but now Simpson's come through and, and gone actually looking at the monitor two seconds faster than anyone else in the race at the moment. Well, this is significant now. Ian Simpson in second place in the race is in fourth place in the championship, and there is no one ahead of him in the race who has points higher than his in the championship so Steve Ives has only got 11 so if Steve Ives were to win this one and he won't at the moment because he's in third place 
he's not going to be able to do anything fantastic. Jim Moody's only got 15, so 20 points would lift Moody onto 35, and 17 for second would put Simpson into the championship lead. Number 22 in your picture now, Ian Simpson from Dalbiti is on his way to the championship lead if he manages to stay on the bike. His father, Bill, probably one of his greatest fans, helps him screw the bike together, and together they're a formidable team. Simpson was picked up by Mick Grant for the Suzuki team during last year, and then elected to go his own way, so... He's now on the Francis Neal machine and in second place looking good. Steve Ives, though, has by no means given up. Having said that, Moody, if anything, is getting away. Yeah, Moody looks to be stretching his advantage. The conditions are improving as the race goes on. Um, there is less and less surface water on the track, and as each one of these three are using different manufacturers' tyres, then that will come into play. The, the drying conditions may be helping Moody's machine. Steve Ives is dropping back a little bit now, but uh, Ian Simpson definitely looks the most confident out there. Two and a bit laps to do now. They're along Cooper Street. You can't mistake the colour of Moody's Yamaha out in front. Then it's Simpson, Steve Ives, Brian Morrison. A good old regular plod there in fourth. Young Sean Emmett justifying his pole position place is in fifth. And Carl Fogarty now up to sixth. Behind Carl Fogarty is the man who charged into the early lead, number 26, Dave Martin from Southall. So quite a good performance from Martin, despite the fact we had him confused. I'm sure we will have more than opportunity over the next three meetings and the next one is at Cadwell Ives having gone past Simpson Simpson then relegated so Ives now on the charge realizing that he's got to do something Steve Ives down there languishing by his standards in one two three four ninth place in the championship on just 11 points so Ives now has got Moody in his sight. Simpson, the battle is about second and third place. Meanwhile, Jim Moody, half a second away from them and moving further and further away. The rear end of uh, Steve Ives' machine there, twitching as he came into clearways. Uh, it's a very difficult spot on the track. My line was in the middle of the track there to avoid the rubber. They seem to be going over it. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but uh, we'll have to keep our eye on that. But Moody certainly stretching away at this stage. Well, the battle in this race is about these two. Simpson up the inside, exiting Paddock Hill Bend, up Halewood Hill towards Druid. Simpson goes through again. Passed on the inside, the sun now beaming down, but it's too late to do anything about the surface on the track. It's still very, very wet. Not too much of a problem to these fellas because they are on street legal tyres. Unleaded fuel, the order of the day in the super sports class. Very much a green formula, and uh, any interference with the original specification of the machine is not only frowned upon, but would in fact entail disqualification. Simpson back into second. I think it's going to be a tussle between these two as to which of them gets second place. It looks as though Jim Moody is going to collect 20 points to add to his 15. Simpson just has to get second place if he's going to finish ahead of Moody in the table. Really is a cautious race, Roger, and I sympathise with him. It's not easy at all. No, uh, at this stage, we've, we've just one lap remaining after this one. Um, They'll be hoping to just stay upright and finish and get the points um, to secure the, the position in the championship. There are um, another three rounds to go after this. Uh, I think I'm correct in saying so. Um, therefore, the points are all important and, and it's much easier to score points in a wet race than it is in a dry one. Having said that, I'm doing myself an injustice there. I've just finished second in the 750, but it often is very much easier in a, in a wet race. Well, there it is then, two and a half miles for Jim Moody to do. 
If he pulls this one off, it'll be his first win. The best he's had is a third place at Donington. So a nice result if he can just cruise home and get the win, the 20 points, and the little purse of 400 pounds that goes with this one. I'm not going to ask Roger Burnett how he's going to spend his prize money. I'm quite sure he has plans for it. Moody, however, will go home with that cheque in his pocket to Glasgow, but more than ever will he be delighted with the 20 points, moving him up. Simpson, number 22 in your picture now, has got to get past Steve Ives if he's going to take the championship lead at this, the halfway stage. And Ives is pulling away. I don't think Simpson's got any answer for this. He's going to cruise home and collect 15. There is the second place man, two on the bike, two in the race, second in the championship last year, Steve Ives from Hyde in Cheshire. When he's not racing motorbikes, he makes windows. It occurs to me that he might have made the window that he's peering through at the moment because it's certainly fog free. There's Moody on the inside of a tail ender, whips off a tear off lens or certainly wipes something off his visor. Hanging over beautifully off the side of the bike, flicking it down, not quite with the knee on the tarmac, but in fairly confident form, Moody then, and a big weave as he put the power in, down under the bridge towards Clearways for the last time. Exiting Clearways, we're looking now for Jim Moody. In shot, the sun shining on Jim Moody for a 20-point and a 400-pound win. Clark curve is all that remains to be negotiated. He's safely around it, the line's in sight, the chequered flag is out, Jim Moody from Glasgow gets the win. Ives goes over in second, and Ian Simpson takes third from a fine fourth place by number 27, Sean Emmett, Morrison got fifth, and Fogarty sixth. Well, as Barry mentioned, Jim Moody's first win in this year's championship. He was third at Donington in the last race. Steve Ives in second place. Ian Simpson, 15 points to add to the 20 he earned as the winner at Donington. And that leaves the overall situation. Brian Morrison now leading by a point from Mark Farmer. He was the leader after two rounds. Then three points further adrift, Moody and Simpson on 35 points.